These are not identical. There is some deception here. They are identical on the face of it. I don't know if, whether the, um, the pastor would like to cooperate. I would like him to open if he pleases, if he will help me. Otherwise, I have to call somebody from the, from, from the audience. If you will help me, this book here, Isaiah chapter 37. If you'll only open Isaiah 37. No, this one here. These are twins. We want to compare the twins to see how they are deceiving the Christian world, how they produce this by the millions and deceive the ordinary people. I just want to demonstrate that, and I would like him to help me with this one, sir. This is the Holy Bible, Revised Standard Version. Just open Isaiah 37, and I'll read from here and see whether it is the same. That's all. If you will, sir. Shall I? Yes, sir. Okay. Just open it. Just open it. Just have a look, sir, while I'm reading. Just have a look whether I'm reading correctly. Isaiah 37. Which verse? From verse 1, sir. So we don't have to search. 37. Isaiah. Got it, sir? Verse 1. When King Hezekiah heard it, he rent his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth and went into the house of the Lord. Correct, sir? Yes, I am following. Yes. yes. And went into the house of the Lord. And he sent Eliakim, who was over the household, and Shebna the secretary. And the senior priest covered with sackcloth to the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos. Verse 3. They said to him, Thus says Hezekiah, this day is a day of distress, of rebuke, and of disgrace. Children have come to the birth, and there is no strength to bring them forth. It may be that the Lord your God heard all the words of Rabakshe, uh, whom his master, the king of Assyria, has sent to mock the living God. And go on to verse 8, the Rabshake returned and found the king of Assyria fighting and going on to verse 14, Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it and Hezekiah and on and on. Word for word the same. Yes. But sir, I'm not reading from the book of Isaiah. I'm reading from the book of Kings. You'll explain that. When your time comes. the greatness of the Bible. <laughs> you see, word for word, word for word, I am reading 2 Kings 19, and he's confirming in Isaiah 37. In other words, word for word, it is the same. And let me share with you the knowledge I have gathered from the Christian learned men. They tell me, unless the pastor says to the contrary, that the Bible was not a verbal revelation. Like we Muslims believe about the Quran. We believe that the Quran was a verbal revelation. God Almighty tells his messenger, Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Say, he is God the one and only. So Muhammad says, Qul huwa Allahu ahad. So Allah is Samad, God the Eternal Absolute, so he says Allah is Samad. He says, Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He does not beget and is not begotten, so he says, Lam yalid wa lam. It was a, the Quran is a verbal revelation. The Christians do not believe in a verbal revelation. They believe that the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, inspired people, tickled people to write. What they were wrote. But in that case, you can't have word for word reproduction. If somebody tickles you to write about this meeting, you can't reproduce word for word what the other man has written, the other journalist. Your wordings will differ, your settings will differ. This is human, even if you are inspired to write about this meeting. No two will be identical. Here, identical, which means that this was stolen. In literature, they call it plagiarism. Somebody has been plagiarizing what was written. This guy here, under his own name, he rewrites this whole thing, and he says, this is mine. In literature, you call that stealing, and you can be charged for stealing. Now, God doesn't do that. He doesn't dictate to one prophet, and then he forgets what he has inspired, and he takes the trouble of repeating word for word, phrase for phrase, comma for comma, full stop for full stop. 
God doesn't do that. And the Holy Spirit don't do that. The professor, the pastor will explain how it comes about that there is an identical word for word reproduction from one book written hundreds of years before the other book was written. How did they do that? Let us hear this Christian young man, Hans Kung. Hans Kung. He's written a book called Infallible, question mark. Author of being Christian. He says, who is this man, Hans Kung? I don't know whether I'm pronouncing it correctly. Please forgive me. You know, the Scandinavian language is a bit difficult on my tongue. <laughs> the 43-year-old Swiss-born, Swiss-born professor of dogmatic and ecumenical theology and director of the Institute of Ecumenical Studies at Tübingen University in West Germany, was one of the select group of official theologians appointed during the Vatican II Council by Pope John himself, known as the young protege of modern theology, and consequently may not be interpreted. Uh, he says, now, nowhere do the books, he says, nowhere do the books of the New Testament claim to have fallen directly from heaven. Nowhere. This is what our friend Hans Kung says. On the contrary, often enough, they quite candidly emphasize, quite candidly, honestly, they emphasize 